Hello, Hello guys, we are back with uh, Kishan. He's going to make a, make us a, a video uh, game live. So yeah, Kishan, maybe you can tell us a bit about yourself. Uh, so I am I am an 18 years old developer. I have been developing games since I was 15. And over the years, I've been expanding my knowledge in other fields. And today I'm occupying a Linux sysadmin and DevOps position at Ethiopia, which is a web agency. And during my free time, I regularly develop full stack web apps using Node.js and Express for the backend, a React on the front, and I've got a dedicated server where uh, I deploy sites and apps often. And I've been participating in various hackathons, especially IETF ones with Cyberstorm.mu, a community of talented Mauritian people, and I've been a finalist and mentor for the Google Coding Contest. Um, recently, I've been an offer as well, but I'll keep that for the end. Um, <clears throat> so, we can go ahead and start. Well, let me present what I will be showing you as demo game today. The end game for this session will be made up of a tank a player, and two joysticks because it is essentially aimed to be a mobile game, and basically the player can aim and shoot or move using these joysticks to destroy the enemies. If however, if however the enemies collide with the player, he should lose self. There's a bug right now, but it will be fixed in the version that I will be showing today. Um, so... We will be making the game in Unity. Unity is a game engine that is one of the mo most popular, if not the most popular. And in Unity, when you make a game or a project for that matter, everything is made up of scenes. A scene is basically an environment made up of several, several objects. Um, objects in Unity are called game objects, and basically anything can be a game object in Unity. Let me create a new scene. Um, I've already created a project. And right now there's uh, an empty scene. Um, you have different windows by default in Unity. The first one is the scene window. And the scene window is where we can position game objects around or make changes manually as we can move around in the scene. Um, you can rearrange the windows, and that's my favorite layout. Down below is a game window, where we can have a preview of how our game will, will look like. So for example, if I create a cube, you can see that it appears in my game window, and in my scene window, I can move around, I can move the game object, or using the other tools that I have with me, I can rotate it, I can scale I can scale it around whatever axis I want and yeah, basically these are the basic tools that you can use to position game object position game objects around in our scene and switch them. Then um, this window right here is a hierarchy window. It will show us a list of all the game objects that we have in our scene in our current scene. And by default, there are two game objects in, a, in an empty scene. I guess it is not, not empty, but yeah. Uh, there's a main camera. So let me close that cube again. And the camera is what will be responsible for previewing whatever, in, whatever there is in our scene to the end user. It sort of acts as a player's eyes in a game. And you can see that if I move it closer to the cube, the cube um, seems bigger. And I can customize every game object can be assigned components. So you have a couple of basic components that are present in in scenes and an empty game object, on game object by default. So 
on the main camera game object, there's a transform and camera component. The transform component is what will allow us to tweak the position, position and scale of the game object. So let me showcase that with the cube. So there's a X, Y, and Z axis. The X axis is the right one. So I can move the cube around in my scene or directly from the inspector. I can also rotate it and scale it as I was showing with the basic tools from the thing itself. Then, <coughs> give me a sec. Yeah, then there's the directional light component. Without the directional light, everything, would that, nothing would be visible in the scene and it sort of acts as a light. So if I disable the directional light, everything just becomes black and a light is important for rendering. And the light, of course, the directional light comp and game object has a light component attached to it. And we can change the type, for example, so that we can simulate uh, torches, flashlights, or the sunlight. By default, it is acting as the source of sunlight in our scene. We can increase the intensity as well, as well as change other settings that will contribute towards the final rendering of the scene. And of course, the uh, camera has other the main ca the camera component has other values that can be tweaked in its component, such as changing the projection to have an autographic or perspective field of view, changing the amount of degrees the player can view around. And let's now start making the game. I'll be explaining other components as we move on. Let me create a new scene. So we will start by I have already imported the assets that we'll be using in the in the game. I have a couple of materials with me. I showcase how to make them and what are materials to and we already have our textures and some sounds. <coughs> so first of all, I will be making a cube, a 3D object cube. It will be the ground. Uh, I can rename the game object. I then, I then the hierarchy directly or in the inspector. I will mock it as static since it will give us some performance benefits by making it as static. Um, I will give it a scale of 150 and 150 on the X and Z axis. And <coughs> yeah. And the cube, an empty cube, a uh, cube when you create it, a cube game object has also a box collider component to it. The box collider is what will be responsible for handling collisions and detecting collisions. And there's a mesh renderer as well. Without the mesh renderer, the cube would be invisible and any game object for that matter. Uh, I will create walls as well so that the player doesn't fall off. That would be a bit dumb. And also set the position because I want it centered on my map. So I will create a, an, empty comp an empty game object to regroup all the walls that I will be creating. Basically, I'll, I will disable the mesh renderer component so that they can be invincible. invincible. Two walls and the third wall.
and my lo my lost sword. And I will sell a cool ocean and be able to end this one job. As for the ground, I will also give it uh, another texture. It is to play right now. So basically, you can create material, which material are basically objects or other. Well, it's something that you can assign textures and modify the shaders of to give a different look to a game object, to a game object renderer. So I will name it. I don't know. Name ground or something. And I can basically drag and drop it, drag and drop it to assign it to my ground. And you can see that it is assigned there. And if I change the color, it will affect directly the color of my of the renderer that I assigned it to, as you can see. But I will be using a texture. So and I'll be the texture. And the tiling 15 by 15. It will be repeated 15 times on the y axis and 15 times on the x axis in 2D. So that's done. Now I'm going to make the player. The player will be a cube itself. I will name it player. Then I will reset its position. So I can reset its transform directly. And it will be at 0, 1, and 0. I have also, I, I will also need to put tags so that later I can detect what collided with what based on the tags. And that's how I'm going to handle the health and. Ah, there's already a tag for player. I forgot. So I will assign a tag to the player. And then I have all, I have already created two materials, but. For the sake of showing you that, I will create the cyan one again. So I'm going to create a material, name it cyan, and give it a color of 0, 110, and 255. I guess it's blue now. Well, let me name it blue, and I will assign it to the player. So that's the player tag. It's body. Uh, I have also created a yellow material. Let me decrease the smoothness. Yeah. And the player will have a game object uh, component. Sorry. A rigid body com component. It is a component that you will allow for physics, physics stuff like gravity. And I will kind of need it for the movement etc later so I want my player to move only only uh, on the x-axis like here and here I don't want him to rotate it will have a direct which will rotate so I will freeze everything except the position x and z for the movement the player will also have a child component a child game object sorry a sphere it will i will name it the rotator it is the thing that will rotate when we'll have to aim enemies so rotator it will be yellow this is the thing and um, it will be at zero zero that size and I will resize it so that its scale is 0 0.75 on all axes. <coughs> then it will have that rotator will have a child 3D object, 3D game object again, which will be the which will be the cylinder. Uh, it will be the turret, so we can name it turret already. The turret, let me quickly put in position that I have already tested before. Okay. 
and who shall hit? will be yellow as well and sorry if I don't have enough time to answer to the question I will try to answer them as soon as possible I'll create a 3D I'll create an empty component an empty object as well name it bullet end and it will basically serve as the spawning point for the bullets when we will shoot later so 0 0 0.25 Oh, and another thing again. So right now you can see that the resistor, its position, it has, it is at zero, zero dot five and zero. But it is actually a local position because it is a child of the player game object. Its position and rather all its transform will be relative to that of the player. So if However, my Redditor game object was not a child of the player. Its position would not be the same. So that's a thing to remember at times. <coughs> I rotate it as well in my bullet end so that it points correctly to where I'm going to shoot later. Then my rotator and my turret, they don't need to have a collider because they won't be participating in collisions. So I can disable the component or remove it directly. The rotator and the turret. Um, I will also... Now we will set up the scene a bit so that we because it looks kind of gloomy. First of all, let's 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 move the main camera. So my main camera will be at zero, twelve dot five, and yeah, that's now my next ten. Wait. Yeah, it will be a top-down game. Then our directional light, we will rotate it and move it a bit as well. And at times we have to bake our scene so that we have the best settings with the light. So I let this bake while I'll continue to work on the game. I will also create a canvas to the game object to act as to basically provide a place where I, I can put the joysticks and text, rather components or game objects that the player will directly interact with. So I'll, I will create a GUI canvas. And I will put a scale with screen size and the canvas scaler so that my game scales appropriately with all sorts of at least most out of 16.9 aspect ratios and mobile screens. Yeah. So I will start by making the joysticks. I have already prefabs defined and prefabs available. Prefabs are already made versions of game objects that I can drag and drop in a scene. So I will have a joystick. And 300. Everywhere. 
the position Z is not important right now. If we had if we had a game objects overlapping over game objects, then it would play a role. But right now it won't. So it will be my move joystick. And I will have to resize the frame as well. And there is already a script attached to the game object. It will basically, every movement that we do on the joystick will be on the, the X axis will be named horizontal and the Y vertical. And we will make use of that later. So move joystick. And I have another, the loop joystick that's for aiming. Of course, you can name them whatever you want. And it will be at the opposite side of the screen, like mirrored. And I will change its, its axis, so move X for the X and move Y for the Y axis. And yeah, we can start making the player move, I guess. I had I have already made the script, so there's the player movement script. Basically what it does, if you know a bit about C-Shop or programming in general, I have variables defined, but because it's Unity, I have way more data types, kind of. So there's a rotator. I define a public variable that I name rotator. And that's, that will correspond to the rotator game object that we created. The cube of it, the rigid body of our player tank. The speed, we can tweak that later to allow our tank to go faster. And yeah, let's just let's start spinning. So at the start of the game loop, this function will run just once. So when the game starts, we will assign the cube of B variable, the rugged body on our player tank, so that we don't have to get the component each time and we save some processing power in the process by caching it in a way. And this function will run at fixed intervals each frame. And I have functions defined. The get input function takes two takes two string two string parameters that will correspond to the axis that we will be aiming to um, fetch the input. And using the the prefab that we created for the joysticks, we can basically detect if the player is doing an input. If there is an input, then we can change the velocity of the rigid body component on the player to correspond to these inputs. That is the X and the Y input multiplied by the speed that we defined earlier. As for the rotator, that will be getting the inputs from the other joystick that we define and accordingly move and rotate the turret or rotator. So I can already drag and drop the script on the player tank. And the rotator, I will assign it to the child, the first child of the player. So right now, if I play, I should be able to move around, hopefully. So yeah, I can move around. I can, no, I'm not being able to aim. I think I know why. So let me look at my script again. Ah, I, I did not define the axis correctly. It's mouse X and mouse Y. So right now I should be able to rotate my turret. Or my rotator. Yeah, works. So the next step is to make the camera follow the player. So I will put a camera follow script and the main camera and assign a target, a target which I want it to follow. And if we look at the script, it basically, we basically define two variables, a player and a height. The player, or really the target, is what the camera will be following. And quite simple script, it will be following, it will be looking at the, it will be updating its position each time the fixed update loop there finishes. It is the last loop that executes per, per frame. And if we have a variable defined, 
as a target, hopefully here, then we will update the position of the camera to follow the latter. So we have already put in here, so I can put the player as a variable, assign it, and if I move, it should follow me around. Yeah, works fine. Then to shoot bullets, I will be assigning a bullet system. No, let me create the bullet first. So the bullet will be a sphere. And let, let us customize the sphere in a Zero, zero, dead, five. The position is not important as we will be making it uh, a push up soon. The scale will be zero that push around all axes. Copy this because I'm done. And give it a red color. Or oh, any color that we want, basically. And it shouldn't be able to cause shadows. We don't want shadows when. Where is that? Of everything. We don't have we don't want to have shadows when we should bullet. That's that will be real. Uh, we will put a bullet tag with us here. And give it a rigid body. It won't use gravity. The bullet will continue to move forward. We will have a script on it that will automatically destroy it after some seconds. And it shouldn't be able to move anywhere except in the list in the direction that we pointed it to move. No, it should not be able to move down. That is, it will be fired in a, in a single axis, or rather a single path, straight path. Then, yeah, let's put, uh, let's put the light green color here. Because our enemy will be red. If I have the time to create it, the sphere collider, I will move, I will increase it, its radius a bit. Name it bullet, and I can drag and drop it to make it become a bullet. I had already one defined, so I will be using that one itself. And you can see that on the bullet, bullet prefab, we have a destroyer script. The destroyer script will basically call a function that will destroy the correct game object it's assigned to in the amount of time we define. So in three seconds our bullet will be destroyed as soon as it is created. Um, the player will now be need to be able to shoot bullets. So we will assign the bullet system script to it. Um, assign it the transform or the yeah transform of the game object that we want the bullets to be spawned from. The bullet prefab that we created, force and delay. The delay is to prevent that the player can continue to shoot bullets. Like there needs to be at least 0 0.5 seconds between shots. And we have a bug. The player needs to have an audio source to play a sound when the bullet is shot. Do not turn away. Audio source is just a component which, well, we will ask as an audio source. So let me test that again. Yeah, works. And the bullet system, the bullet system script is a bit complicated. So we have the variables we define. We just explain them. And yeah, at the start we are getting the component audio source from the player game object other game object that, is, that the script is attached to. So that then we have a check in the fixed update. If we are pushing the axis um, more than 75%, and if we have a, if, if the delay that we set is, is both, then we can, we can, we can play a sound for the bullet when it is fired and create an instance of the bullet prefab at the position and rotation that we define at the bullet and transform. And we add a force to its rigid body so that it 
moves forward the correct time is just there so that we can check for the division next time we shoot. Next, let's just make an enemy quickly. And so yeah, my enemy will be a sphere. Enemy. Let's have a tag of enemy. And one. have a really body as well so that it can move it can move it's a really good body again will be frozen on the y axis because you don't know weird things happen when you begin to be honest uh, it won't use gravity as well because well i don't want it to and if we have an audio source component so that you can play a sound when it is destroyed. Explosion zero. Do not turn away. And basically, I think that yeah, it is enough. Let's assign the script of the enemy to it. The enemy script. This is just one thing first. So yeah, it moves in my direction. It should be red in color. And we already had a prefab defined for it. And let's, let me load the thing that I had already completed so that I can show why is my shader. Why are my shaders like that? Let's, con let's continue in the other thing then. So yeah, we have already transformed the enemy into a prefab. Then we will create an empty object that will act as the enemy spawner. And yeah, 1.5. We have a script defined for it. And we can set the enemy prefab. I won't get the time to show you all the scripts, but I can do a GitHub public repo where everything should be accessible. So, where is it on? Okay. Yeah, well, there are a couple of bugs. And unfortunately, we won't get the time to finish. Making a game in 45 minutes is really short. And that's the final game that I had created over the course of six months. And yeah, basically in the final game, there is a shop, there are several enemies. And you can customize your tag, create the, the, yeah, there are different types of tanks as well. There are powers, pickups, there are challenges, gems, rivers, and a lot of features, as you can see. Uh, I hope you learned some things in the session. I'm sorry that we couldn't finish. I'll, I will try to prepare and a better session next year if I get approved. And yeah, as I told, as I was saying during the start of the session, I I am an author now, and I had already made I just made a book about making games in Unity. And in the in that book, there is a a full guide on everything we talked today and more, like details about all the components that we have seen and even the test game that we are making. And yeah, I will try to provide the link to a, a repo 
and also dig GitHub repo where I can put the assets of the game so that anyone can try. And yeah, I guess that's as much as I can show in that session. Thanks everyone. Yes, it was a really nice presentation, but yeah, we understand that a game can be made in such a short amount of time. But let me tell you, it was really informative. And uh, I hope that I hope that uh, maybe next time you handle it in a real environment instead of sitting here virtually. I guess that would be a better, better place. But yeah, it was great, Kishan. That's nice. Thank you.